So hello everyone, welcome back to the last session of the uh, exhibit hall for Anaxel 24. My name's Teresa Gore, I'm a content manager for HealthySimulation.com and a past president of Anaxel, and I'm so excited. I get to talk with the standards committee today, and um, the standards have evolved since, since 2009. Uh, as they started and they were first printed in 2011 and boy have they grown since then and I love to see how things continue to evolve. I have Barbara Wilson Keats with me and also Heidi De Gregorio. Okay, I hope I got that one good uh, and so they're on the standards committee and they're going to give us some updates of what's going on. Uh, we've done a lot of change this last publication and we've gone from the Anaxal Standards of Best Practice Simulation to the Healthcare Simulation uh, Best Practices. And I just want you guys to talk to us about what happened with the last version and what's going on as we go forward with the next one. So I'm going to turn this over so you can pick up your microphones and uh, I'll share this one with you. I'll start. <laughs> um, so the last standards were um, published in 2012, and they were 10 standards. <clears throat> From those 10 standards, we developed, uh, the board decided to go with four cornerstone standards. These are the basic standards that you need for all simulation programs. Those core uh, cornerstone standards are pre-briefing, which consists of briefing and pre-brief uh, pre preparation, facilitation, the debriefing process, as well as professional integrity. And I'll turn it over to my colleague Heidi here to talk a little bit about our latest mandate from the board um, in terms of those cornerstone standards. Heidi? Okay, so the cornerstone standards, the four that um, Barbara was just talking about, are going through a very rigorous process right now where we are doing you know, basically the research methodology and we are doing systematic reviews. Debriefing is the only one that is taking an umbrella review format, but the rest of them are systematic reviews. And so it has been quite a rigorous process. So when the new version comes out late uh, December, January of those four, you will see that they will be supported by the latest and greatest evidence out there. Um, and so that's really important because we know that integrating the standards of best practice into our simulation programs is really what gives us that, you know, it's, it's that support for our programs that we take to our administration that we're doing standards of best practice. And also as you, you know, get the endorsement and or if you're looking for sim accreditation, those are important pieces that we need to have integrated into our programs. And so the rigor that's going with these new revisions is really gonna be important and will support the rigor within your own programs. So that's important. So as you're looking at this and you're seeing, how do people, let's remind people how all well you can access the standards and what versions they come in. So I know that we've got them a lot of different languages, but you also have some printed copies here to, to show the audience. So I'm old school. I like paper. <laughs> so um, I carry this around in my bag. Um, so I, I think it's really valuable. But then also in our sim room, so we are an accredi accredited sim center. We, um, I cover over all disciplines that utilize simulation at our institution. So uh, speech language pathology, athletic training, physical therapy, nursing, our APRNs. Um, our dietitians now have some types of competencies, so they come to our sim lab too. And then our undergraduate that are um, looking at going into med school and things and want some experiential learning, we do sim for them also. So paper's always good. You can always go online and print. But then we have the infographs, and these are really nice to put in your sim rooms. So if you have somebody who's just maybe not or needs a reminder, if you have these around, it's really valuable. We went on a tour um, on Wednesday, and they actually had the standards printed on the wall. And I thought, hmm, 
I'm going to do that except for the core four because they will be changing. So I'm going to have the other ones printed and put on our wall. So I thought that was really helpful. And I've also seen um, in terms of the infographics, I like the infographics because they give you all the criteria for the standards. So I've also seen centers where um, the infographics are, are, are attached to the wall so that you can quickly, um, you know, if you're in debriefing, you can glance at that infographic, you get an idea of what are the different criteria that I need to be covering to ensure that I am meeting that debriefing process standard, that I'm providing safe, effective, um, simulation-based experiences for the students, and I, we are providing them in a safe environment that way. And one of the things I did is I had them printed so they were up on the wall and the students could see them. Mm. Because if the students see them and say, we do this because it's, it is there from the science, we've got the evidence so that if you want to get the best learning, so you engage them and bring them in the process, and they become, I think, a little bit more engaged. When we were up here chatting just before we got started, um, what has it meant to you uh, with the name change? Of it being not the Anaxal nursing standards to the healthcare simulation standard. So just the name alone, I don't know how many of you are working with other disciplines, but just the name change to healthcare simulation standards of best practice really has helped other disciplines to adapt them. And so when, because we're accredited, I mandate it in our department, in our sim program, it is required. It's not a, eh, can I? No, you have to. Um, so when you submit information in our Google Drive that I control, um, it is, it's a requirement. But it's helpful now with the name change because now it's not specifically. I don't. I don't get the, you know, the pushback that says, "Well, this was written for nursing." It wasn't. The groups that have done the 2021 revision and even the ones that are working now to make the new revisions are interprofessional groups. There are pharmacists, there are nursing and physicians and, and physical therapists that are part of every of the standards groups that and DEI representatives. So it certainly does give you that breadth um, across all disciplines. So I think that's really important. I like the, the name change because the, I think the standards become international because you can, you can approach them from a, a global audience. And we know that simulation is being used throughout the world. It's being used in Europe, Australia, um, Africa, um, all, you know, pretty well anywhere, South America, Latin America. Um, you know, the standards are there. So I think when, when we change the name, that really brought it forefront that we can show the world and show the global audience of, of simulation that these apply to you. You know, they're not nursing, they're not just American. They are, they are universal and global in scope, which is exciting, I think. Which gets back to the international name. And it, it's great when we can do that. Um, you know, what I've seen is, I just reviewed, some, there's uh, someone here presenting physical therapy and they now, their accrediting board has simulate has competency requirements and they actually state that they want the standards for simulation followed so this is growing and as this is going to become this goes back to the ncsbn simulation guidelines that said in the original one that you have to do the anaxal standards of best practice to get the same results and so we can't just go through this and cause harm and um you know, I always remember this is a living document and that it's going to continue to be revised. So what was the, the, the last ones that came out, the last standards? What was it that is new, that's innovative, that's really drawn? Because, you know, we had the, the addition of the professional integrity and things like that. So what do you want the audience here to think about? to think about with the upcoming changes and the, the revisions and uh, how to do the practice, the best practices. So a I think, there. yeah, there's a lot there. So, um, so I've been working on the facilitation, which really facilitation, when you think about what does that mean, 
It's not just during the actual experience. Facilitation includes pre-briefing, setup, training of facilitators, all the way through debriefing and post-evaluation. So facilitation is quite large. Um, our systematic review um, actually gave us over 8,000 articles to review um, for our newest standard. And what we found really is that there isn't a lot of information that's being published on the full spectrum of facilitation. And if people are publishing on the full piece of facilitation, they're not writing it in such a way that it can be found very easily. And so there's some gaps there with the way in which that we are publishing. And I think that's, that's you know, many of us are, have been in it for a while, um, going on better than 10 years in SIM. And, and so there's, there's some gaps that we're finding that with regards to now, this is, it's a scientific methodology. It is not just a fun thing to do anymore. Um, and so there's a lot of science behind it. So really the scientific expression of what you're doing, because lots of people are doing great things, but we're not, we're not cataloging it. We're not knowing what other people are doing. And I think that using the standards of best practice and some of the terms that are there and then to publish is going to be really important as we continue to grow and move forward. And the good thing about that is, is if you're a PhD student, I, we just gave you a topic, okay, for your dissertation. Uh, and if you're looking to where you can fill that niche and that need, um, you know, it's, it's actually what we're doing is taking the simulation design standard and putting it into the whole process of our review. And I, I just love how when somebody says, what do you do it? Well, you do follow the sim design. You do a needs assessment, a gap analysis, and then you look and then you map it out. And that's the beauty of this. Is there anything else you would like to add, Barbara, before we conclude this session? Um, I know that Heidi is uh, a loves the facilitation standard. My personal favorite is uh, pre-briefing. So pre-briefing, preparation, and briefing. I'm on that uh, group for the standards committee that looking at all the literature around pre-briefing, uh, preparation and briefing. There's a lot of literature out there. We looked at over 7,000 articles um, and we got down to about less than 100 that really look at what it is that pre-briefing and, and briefing does and the impact that they have on the simulation experiences. Um, I think, you know, pre-briefing sets the stage. It sets the stage for what is expected of the students, what's expected of the, the supporters and the simulationists, the facilitator. Um, it also sets the stage for what debriefing is going to look like. So it plays such an important role. It's not just something happens that just before they engage in simulation, but overall what is, um, how is that going to play out for the students or the learners? Thank you. All right, so I have a challenge for everyone. And I'd love for you to email me, Teresa at HealthySimulation.com. What percentage goes with each stage of simulation? What goes with the pre-briefing preparation, the actual simulation, and the debriefing? It can come up to 100%. And so I, I, and so I actually surprised them with my response, and I've asked others. And, we've, I, and we're, I'm seeing a theme here. So I challenge you uh, to think about that is if you had to give a weighted percentage, what would it be to come up to 100% for those three stages? So well, thank you once again for attending this session on the healthcare simulation standards of best practice. I'm Teresa Gore and I'm with Healthy Sim and I wanna thank you for attending today.